Hi, I'm Bruce Asher, and in this video, we're going to look at MIDI part editing in Cubase. You can see here that we've got three different MIDI based tracks. These are instrument tracks in Cubase that are contain, that contain MIDI information, uh, and they are triggering three different instruments. Just for a quick tour of these chord stabs, bass line, and a rhythmic backing there. Now, you can see that at the moment, this one takes up one bar, and there's actually two copies of it, two versions of it. Uh, and then there's this one here and this one here, which are two bars in length. Once you've recorded or you've added some MIDI events to any particular track, you need to turn it into something that's gonna sound a little bit more like a finished track in terms of an arrangement. And this is where you start looking into using the MIDI part arrangement tools. Um, and there are a bunch of these tools uh, available in Cubase. Um, we have the toolbar along the top. You also got the right mouse click toolbar as well. And you can see here we have object selection. That's the default tool. We have range selection, draw tool, the, the arrays tool, the split tool, and so on. It's worth pointing out that the tool does actually vary depending on the key modifier that you're actually using. So this will vary between Mac and Windows systems, but generally Alt, Control, the Option key, and so on, the Command key, will actually change what the tool actually does. So in this case, you can see if I press the Alt, Alt key on this keyboard, it starts to change the actual usage of the tool, and it matches up with the different types of tool available here. So I can do things like splitting events and so on. Also, if I want to press the Alt key, and I select an event and use the Alt key, and then drag it over, you can see it makes a copy of that particular event, that particular part. And I can actually map out the arrangement of my track by copying parts over. Equally, I can use the left mouse button, click on it, and I can use this range, this selection tool here, and actually grab a whole load and actually move them in one go. As before, I can actually undo this. I'm pressing the Control Z key there. Equally, we can go into the menu and actually look at the undo undo duplicate and actually undo the function there. If you want a more elaborate list of what you've actually done to undo that, you can actually click on the history button here and that will give you a full list, of all the different options available in terms of undoing many, many steps. So with my loop going, I've got a two bar loop. I want to perhaps flesh out initially into something that makes a little bit more sense. So we're talking very often um, in terms of eight bar, 16 bar, 32 bar sections and things like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna choose all of these events here and I'm going to press the Alt key and I'm going to copy them over. And I'm making multiple copies of it. Let's move the loop locator here. I can drag it on the toolbar there but also you'll see at the bottom here I actually type in the number. So if I wanted to actually loop just over to this point here I'd type in a five or double click and I type on, type on five there. Let's set it back to nine again. So we've got this loop. I press play. And you can see how by copying those uh, parts over, the actual events inside them are also copied over and I can actually build up an arrangement. So now if I dip into the other tools that are available here, you can see how I can actually finesse that. So if I right mouse click, or equally I can choose from the top menu, let's choose the mute tool, that little cross there. If I click on this, and now when I move it over the events, you'll see that the tool has actually changed this cross. I can build up the arrangement I can actually mute the different events here, these, these parts, these MIDI parts that contain all these events, and it turns grey. And as I play, they will all come in there. Muting is really useful if you want to experiment with an arrangement, and you want to see what actually works, you don't want to actually get rid of things. If you want to actually delete it completely, you can of course use the erase tool and click on them like this and actually completely erases them. Um, you can also, if I just undo some of these, let's undo the muting as well, you can click on the event and press the delete key as well, and it actually, will actually delete those. So as I say, muting really useful if you want to experiment with different ideas. You want to leave the, leave the, the, the MIDI part there, maybe you want to re-enable it at a later point, and you want to test what's actually going to work in terms of your arrangement, you can use that, that mute tool rather than actually deleting.
There are many other functions as well. If we want to, if we click on this little right, um, this little uh, square box at the bottom right of the uh, MIDI part, we can actually resize them. So let's choose, let's do, let's use that to actually try something a little bit different in terms of the arrangement. I'm going to delete those chord elements there. I'm going to keep the drums by copying them over. I'm then going to copy the bass line here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that over. So we end up just getting those first two notes and then I'm going to copy. So effectively what I've done, I've changed the size, I've resized the, the, that MIDI part and then I've made copies. Another way of doing that is to use the scissors tool. So you can actually click on that and you clip, click on the scissors and then I change back to this selection tool. I can delete those and then I can actually copy it over and do it this way. So you can see there are different ways of doing the same thing. Let's just undo those. So Control Z once again, and let's have a listen to what it does in this first section. So you can see how you're actually changing what's going on. You're actually, in fact, changing the sound of things without having to dive into that actual MIDI part itself. I'm just selecting that first couple of beats of it, and that works quite nicely. It's worth also remembering that if I now click on that, that event um, and that part, you'll see the MIDI events inside. And actually the ones, this is, this is the selection I've chosen. I've resized it, so it's actually just showing this area here. Those MIDI events are still there. So they still exist, but they're effectively muted, so they're not playing. So this is something that sometimes missed out upon. So it means that if I wanted to resize it again, I can resize it. I delete that second one and if I then resize it, you'll notice that it brings those notes back in again. So they're never really lost. Deleting, it does something somewhat different. It actually will actually get rid of those elements. So if I did delete, if I did delete those, I can actually get rid of them permanently. But let's go back to that. Equally, I can actually choose a number of MIDI parts together. So these ones on the same track, click on them and you can see that it's a little bit confusing because you've got those MIDI, those, the ones that are muted, obviously are not playing, but I've also, the ones that actually will play are actually coloured and you can see I can step through them. So that can lead to a little bit of confusion sometimes. So sometimes what you may want to do is actually split the part and then delete. And that way, when you actually look into it, you'll see that those, those, those events that actually are hidden uh, but not playing have actually gone away. So it's just something to be aware of. So I've now split and I copy those events over and I now can start building up the arrangement. And this of course applies to all the different MIDI parts here. You have a number of different of these little, these little buttons around the place which allow you to do different things, these little squares. And you'll notice that in objects on the arrange page and also when you actually go into the editors themselves. So in the project page, um, we also have a whole bunch of functions um, which you can access for actually manipulating the data within these parts. We highlight the MIDI part and you can then use things like quantize. You have access to all the different quantize tools which you also get when you're actually inside the uh, part itself. So we've looked at toolbar editing of the MIDI parts, but there's also other ways you can actually access and manipulate some of the data that's being played back on those MIDI tracks or instrument tracks. So now we're looking at the MIDI modifier box along the side here in the inspector. If you don't have access to that, click on the setup and choose MIDI modifiers. It's worthwhile doing because it allows you to access some things that, allow, that, that modify the data um, and the playback of the events within that particular track. So we've got this track selected and let's choose transpose. You can hear it's playing a lot higher. Let's bring it down. So I'm moving that note data around just by looking at the MIDI modifier, I'm not looking at the events there. In fact, it doesn't affect anything in there. Let's mute the others and just have a listen. So I'm going to transpose this by two semitones. There we go. Now, of course, it doesn't necessarily fit with those chords, so I'm going to transpose those by two as well. Now we can access this transposition and we can transpose notes within the, within the main window here, but it's separate to this MIDI modifiers box. If I want to make sure that that is hard encoded 
In effect, I change all the events in here permanently. What I then need to do is need to go into the MIDI menu and I need to do freeze MIDI modifiers. And that, what that will do is actually move those events permanently. And you can see them suddenly shift up there. So now we have them permanently like that and it resets the transpose on the left hand side here. There are many other tools. We can actually manipulate things like velocity. We can actually randomize different aspects of the playback. We can randomize position, pitch, velocity, and length of notes. Um, you can use that for semi-humanizing parts, adding a little bit of variation in there. You can limit the range of different things, velocity uh, and also notes. So it suddenly reduces the range of notes. You can do lots of things to uh, manipulate, that, manipulate that note playback. More advanced stuff will be found in the uh, logical editor. And there's a whole bunch of logical presets that do a whole load of interesting things on the underlying data. Um, but that is something that actually takes quite a lot of playing around with. You can look at the presets to get you started, and some of them are very, very useful. But you can also add your own rules and things like that, which really lead to some very interesting places in creative terms. Or it allows you to set up functions which are certain standardized ways that you might want to process MIDI parts. Let's have another look at some of these MIDI modifiers. So I'm going to solo this part here. And we've looked at transpose already. So let's look at randomization. Let's choose pitch. I'm choosing a very big range. And you can hear here how it's randomizing the notes within a particular range. If I limited it just minus one or just minus one and plus one semitones, it will randomize, but only within a very limited range. So that can be quite useful for certain things, but certainly for more melodic material, to start randomizing the pitches, it's really gonna lead into some quite uh, interesting and sort of cacophonous places. Perhaps more useful is if we go into, and we choose randomizing sort of velocity or the position. Uh, now we can actually just nudge, this has been nicely played and quantized previously, but if we choose this, and I, let's choose some slightly a little bit more extreme values here. So do 20, 30 and minus, minus, let's do just plus 30. So it's going to add up to 30 little clock ticks to this. And let's choose uh, MIDI and freeze MIDI modifiers and then have a look at what's going on. And you can see that they've been moved away from the grid in a kind of randomized fashion. And this will apply right across the, across the range. So that's quite interesting for adding a little bit of that sort of slightly sort of more natural or uh, randomized semi-human kind of feel back in. So adding a little bit of randomization to playing if you feel that it sounds a little bit too sequenced. We can of course undo that and go back to how it was before. Just coming back to the tools, we've talked about the, um, some of these tools uh, in relation to actually editing the MIDI parts. Uh, and we've obviously mentioned muting and things like that and splitting and so on. Something worth adding to that is if I want to rejoin these parts together, I can then use the glue tool available here. I select the parts and glue. If I really wanted to, I could select a whole, whole bunch of parts and then press glue. And what it will do, it will glue all the MIDI parts together, but only those ones on the specific track. It doesn't combine them in any other kind of way. It doesn't combine content across tracks. Let's undo that. We've obviously got the MIDI modifiers uh, that allow you to, the, the key modifiers, which allow you to do different things. If I press the Alt key here, I can actually divide. So I don't need to keep on clicking on that split tool. So there are lots of quick ways of accessing those tools, as well as key commands for accessing the tools um, and bringing those up individually. You find you have these modifier keys, which turns the tool into something else. Um, the comp tool is something that we be using in relation to audio. We have the color tool, the playback tool, and others as well. And these all have their uh, purposes for specific types of event and specific types of part. So in this video, we looked at combining MIDI parts, dividing them, copying and pasting them, doing all kinds of interesting things to flesh out what you've created or recorded, and actually trying to find some way of making them into a full scale arrangement. We also looked at the tools along the top of the window and also some of the functions available in the inspector and other functions available in the MIDI menu.